In this video, I'm going to show you how to summarize a column of numeric values. I've loaded a file called body temp, a stack graphic sample data file, into the data sheet. This file contains information on 130 subjects. It actually has their body temperature as well as their recorded heart rate. We're going to concentrate right now on the column called temperature to see what the distribution of body temperatures is amongst these subjects. To do this, the best place to go is to describe on the main menu and then select numeric data, one variable analysis. Like all procedures in Stack Graphics, this procedure begins by displaying a data input dialog box. All you need to do here is select temperature and then press the black arrow to put that column name into the data field. I'm going to leave the select field blank. Select fields are used to select subsets of the data. For example, if I only wanted to analyze the data for the males, I could go to the select field and type gender equals double quote, M-A-L-E double quote, which would tell it to just select the data for the males. When you do this, be careful. Whatever you type within double quotes is case sensitive. Variable names are not, so I don't have to worry about temperature and gender, but with whatever you type within the quotes, uh, you have to type it exactly as it appears in the data sheet. I don't want to do this, so I'll blank that out uh, and tell it to analyze the entire data column. When I then press OK, I'll see a list of different tables and graphs that are available in the one variable analysis procedure. The one I want to look at in this video, actually I'm going to look at four, scatter plot, box and whisker plot, frequency, histogram, and quantile plot. So I'll check those four and press OK, at which point a new analysis window will open up. The analysis window has two text panes on the left, four graphics panes on the right. These are splitter windows and you can double click on any graph to maximize it, double click again to put it back. The graph in the upper right corner is the scatter plot. I'll double click to make it large. What you see here is all the recorded body temperatures for 130 individuals plotted along the x-axis. Along the y-axis the points have been jittered and that's a fancy term for randomly scattered. The point of the graph here is that you can see all of the observations and you get a sense of where they're most dense. In this case between about 97 and a half and 99 degrees. Incidentally you can control the amount of jitter on any graph by going up to the analysis toolbar. That's the lower of the two toolbars and pressing the button with the four arrows. This will bring up a dialog box that controls the amount of jitter in both the horizontal and vertical directions. Right now it's jittered a maximum amount in the vertical direction. If I change the slider though I can reduce the jitter or increase it uh, as I like. Below the scatter plot is a plot called the box and whisker plot. This plot was developed by the late John Tukey as a way to summarize a set of numeric data values. Very interesting plot. The way you create a box and whisker plot is you begin by finding the middle half of the data. You draw a box covering that middle half, in this case running from about 97.8 degrees up to about 98.7 degrees. So half of the data values are within the range covered by the box. You then draw a vertical line, this line here, at the median. The median is the value that divides the data in half. So half of the body temperatures were below 98.3, half were above 98.3. There's also a plus sign that's drawn at the average or the mean. If the data are reasonably symmetric as they are in this case, we'll not see too much difference between the mean and the median. The lines extending above and below the box are called the whiskers. They go out to the largest data value and the smallest data value unless there are points far above or below the box. 
In fact, Professor Tukey defined what he called outside points as points that were more than one and a half box widths, either above the box or below the box. So in this case, it turns out that there are three points, three outside points. Now in stack graphics, whenever you see a point, you can take your mouse and hold the left button down on that point, and it will indicate the row in the data file, uh, in this case row 15, corresponding to that point. So the subject in row 15 evidently had a body temperature of 100.8 degrees, which is unusually far from the box, from the bulk uh, of the measurements. Now, Tukey defined actually outside points and far outside points. Outside points are one and a half box widths or more away from the box. Far outside points would be points three or more box widths away from the box. Now, we don't have any of those, but they would be shown actually as squares with plus signs in the middle. When I talk about identifying outliers, far outside points, points showing up three or more box widths away from the box, are very likely to be outliers, at least if the rest of the data are reasonably symmetric. The third graph that I created was a frequency histogram. If I double click on that to make it large, you'll see a fairly traditional plot. A histogram takes the range of the data, in this case uh, temperature between let's say 96 and 102, divides it into equal length non-overlapping intervals and then plots bars to indicate how many observations fall within each of those intervals. By default, stack graphics will create a number of bars based upon how much data you have. You can always override the default selections though by taking your mouse, pressing the right mouse button, which in stack graphics pulls up a pop-up menu, and selecting pane options. Pane options are options specific to a particular table or graph that we're looking at. In this case, since the data uh, have a range of about six degrees, perhaps 30 classes would be better. I'll put in 30, press OK, and now the intervals match up with the tick marks. The purpose of the graph, incidentally, is to give you a good idea of what the distribution of the observations looks like. And you can almost see that well-known bell-shaped curve uh, as you look at this particular data. The final graph I want to look at here is called a quantile plot. I'll double click on that to make it large. What a quantile plot does is shows you what's called the cumulative distribution of the observations. As a function of temperature, it shows you the proportion of the observations at or below particular values of temperature. Now this is a good place actually to press the right mouse button, which brings up that pop-up menu, and select Locate. Locate brings up a set of crosshair cursors. Now you can move the crosshair cursors around on a graph with your mouse, or you can use the cursor keys to get them exactly where you want them to be. Basically I'm going to line up the crosshairs here at 98.6, and you can see it indicates that about a proportion of 0.694 or about 69.5% of the data were at or below 98.6 degrees.